Hi, the Sultan of Silver here with you, and we're going to go back in time. I'm going to be lighting up my very first pipe that I bought many, many years ago. This is a Dr. Grabo, a very typical first pipe for many. It's made out of briar wood. The very first pipe tobacco that I ever had was Sir Walter Raleigh. My very first lighter was a Zippo. Love a Zippo, although some people don't. And my first camper. Our pipe tool is this. This goes back to the 60s. And it's made by Revlon, the very company that makes nail clippers and that kind of thing. And it's got the tamper, a little knife for cutting flake tobacco, and the little poker thing to clean out the, the bowl. And they all fold up. Many of you have seen this before, made by Revlon. I love this thing. It's about 50 years old. And then my very first ashtray that I put a cork knocker on so that when I'm firing up a pipe, I can just put that in there and rest it, whatever. Today it's resting on a pipe stand that one of my clients made for me with a 3D printer. And I told him that it would be the star of the video one of these days. Yeah, so I'm going to show you how to pack a pipe, how to light a pipe, how to smoke a pipe, and uh, maybe even offer uh, a pipe to one lucky person for a giveaway. So, and of course I'm drinking my Soda Stream cherry juice. I have seltzer water in here with just cherry juice. Naturally sweet, bubbly, wonderful. I love it. You can order the soda stream in the link below. Believe me, it will change your life if you stop drinking soda and make your own bubbly stuff. You're gonna love it. So let me show you how to smoke a pipe. I've been promising you to show you a video, and I think I did it maybe a year ago, on how to smoke a pipe. Honestly, for those who've never done it, I will tell you, there's nothing more zen than smoking a pipe. I kid you not. You can completely zen out. Some of you will know what that means. Other, others, it won't matter to you. So let me just show you the basics real quick. This is my first pipe that I ever had. It's a Dr. Graybo, you can tell from the spade mark on the stem. This is made of briar. I also have corn cob pipes as well, but my first pipe was a briar. That's a corn cob pipe. So what's interesting is it's sentimental to me. Your first pipe will always be sentimental. My first tobacco was Sir Walter Raleigh. It comes in a pouch. You buy it in a drugstore. And this is Sir Walter Raleigh Aromatic. And basically, you can go in like a lot of the old dudes do and just scoop it out like that and just let it let a little bit fall in there like that and just but never stick your finger in and just like jam it in there go in a little bit let some fall in there see it kind of fills to the top and then just kind of like put it down a little bit you want some air in there you don't want it to be so solid that you can't draw air through it a little bit more And finally, a little bit more. One of the things that I heard, and you'll get all kinds of tips from quote unquote expert pipe smokers, but you can become an expert pretty quickly. Now there's my pipe. Never jam your finger down there. Always just pat it with the pad, the fleshy part of your thumb. And I just go like this. I just keep my thumb over it and I just spin it. See that? Like that. And it kind of makes it even. Now this is going to be a quick smoke. It's not packed. The fire doesn't have to go through a lot. A lot of people will use matches, um, wooden matches. Some people will use uh, Zippo lighters. This is a, a classic brass Zippo. I like this. I just like the nostalgia. I like brass too. I like how it kind of discolors. I'm not a brass polisher. I kind of let I let things get a natural patina. This is a vintage Rolling Thunder Zippo with a 
pipe insert, which means you put that over the top of the pipe and that flame is accessible. Some people don't like them and <laughs> I don't know if they're pipe Nazis or what. Whatever. Some people use hemp wicks, which are good. Some people use these. Some people use torch lighters. This is a torch lighter right here. You can listen, you can even hear it. Watch. See that? So you never want to use a torch lighter with a corn cob. But with a briar you can. It'll burn the cob. Um, but I'm not a big fan of torch lighters because you're the life of your pipe will be shortened if you use a torch because it does burn pretty hot. So I'm just going to use my regular Bic lighter. Now, one of the things I do, oh, here's my first <laughs> tamper as well. You want to tamp. You always have to have a tamper in your pocket. Tampers come in so many different styles. This is an old one, old, sc old school pipe tool. It's got three tools on it, a tamper, a pick, and a spoon. This one here goes back to before I was born. It's made by the Revlon company, same company that makes makeup and like nail clippers. I love it. It's flat. Fits in my pocket perfect. But there's the tamper. So we're going to use this. Here's a custom one that one of my clients, Mr. Rizzo, got for me. I love this. A briar tamper with a little... Uh, it almost looks like a hammer, doesn't it? I love it. It just fits in the hand nice and you use this as a pick to clean out the pipe and you use the metal part to tamp it down. Actually, I'll use this. So my first pipe and my very first tobacco. You want to do a what they call a charring light first. Your charring light might not be the light that you, that ignites the tobacco that stays lit for the entire session. So, But let's do a charring light. There's usually two lights, the charring light and then the... I don't even know what the second lighting is called. You pipe experts know what this is, so watch. And when you puff on a pipe, the only thing that I can say is that it's like, it's like sipping. Like if you're sipping wine or sipping a drink, that's basically what you're doing. You're not inhaling into your lungs, so there's none of that. Most pipe smokers, believe it or not, most pipe and cigar smokers don't consider themselves a smoker. When someone says, are you a smoker? People I know who smoke pipes say no because they're not inhaling in their lungs. So, And when you have a beard, I guess the neat thing about being a pipe smoker and a beard is that it imparts like a nice aromatic thing to your beard. And it's not smoky. Don't think ashtray when you think smoky. Okay? Like not gnarly, stinky, gnarly, drunk bar ashtrays. That's not what I'm talking about. This is a completely different vibe. Watch. Now, every time you saw a little puff of smoke, I was sipping on it. That's the charring light. I was going in a circle. And I'm sipping right now, just like I'm literally sipping on a glass. But you never want to puff so much that the pipe is whistling. So now, I'm going to take the tamper, watch, and just tamp it. Because what happens is, the, the tobacco rises a little bit. And you're just basically using the weight of the tamper. You're not jamming it in there. You're putting down some of the combusted um, tobacco that kind of like rises up. Now, I'm going to relight it. Maybe that's what it's called, the relight, the, the charring light, and then the relight with uh, wooden matches. I always like using two matches, see? And of course, when I'm trying to light them, they don't light. <laughs> I am the master at things not working. <laughs> so I'll do it on the side of the box then. Ah, there we go. Okay. Let the sulfur burn off a little bit. Now do a circular light. Mm. 
the lightest tamping that you could possibly do. You don't want to snuff out the fire. And enjoy. This could last anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes. Pipes, have, some pipes have bigger bowls, deeper bowls. Lighter pipes just kind of hang in your mouth. They hang on your, you know, in between your teeth. You're not biting down, clenching. That's what it's called, clenching. So you're not doing that. So I'm not like mm, crunching. I'm just kind of. And you can read on your tablet, read a book, relax, think about things. Watch videos on your phone. I do all my puffing outside, either in the summertime it's out of my back deck or in the Van Gogh room here, which needs a serious cleaning. It's been a long winter, and I open up a lot of mail out here, and I'm just like ripping stuff open, and everything, <laughs> everything just ends up on the table. But when you're by yourself, holy cow. Zen, man, relaxation. When two guys smoke pipes, they can just hang out. This is different than women, I think. It's going to sound sexist, that's, and that's life. When two men are sitting around smoking pipes, they don't have to say a word. Or very few words. And then when you're done, you'll take an ashtray. Now, I, I took a bowl, and I put a cork knocker in the middle of it. It's got like a tear-off adhesive, and you stick it in the middle. That's my, that's my Van Gogh room tray. The other one is just like a traditional ashtray with the cork knocker stuck on the bottom. So you could tap it to clean it out. See that? And most of the time it'll be stuck, so you'll take the pick on the pipe tool. Let's just take the traditional pipe tool. Or the spoon. And kind of get in there, go right to the bottom, loosen it up a little bit, and then just turn it over and tap it. See that? Now obviously this would have been a 45 minute smoke. Now, I don't know if you can see in there, it's pretty much cleaned out. And then what I'll do is I'll take a pipe cleaner, because uh, pipes get really wet, a lot of moisture in them. I put a pipe cleaner in there and I run it right through to the bowl, like that. Turn it around. I usually put like a little L on it and then I twist it like that, and then I pull it out. And then when you feel that, it's wet because of the moisture. And then, I'm done for the day. I don't smoke the same pipe two days in a row. You should have a rotation. That's why when you see the old-fashioned pipe racks, there's the Monday pipe, Tuesday pipe, and people rotate pipes. It's always good to rotate a pipe because it does gain moisture. Uh, a good pipe to start with would be a corn cob pipe. Let me find my traditional cob. Here it is. Um, where, what did I do with it? Again, I'm out in the Van Gogh room, and I'm not even sure what I just did with, well, oh, there it is, right there. This is a Missouri Pride. It's made from a corn cob. See that? It's nice. And some people will put filters in there. I'm a, I don't use a filter. And it is the most incredible smoke in the world. Corn cobs are great to start with. And you get your tobacco, and we'll talk about tobaccos on another time. But overall, that's how you smoke and enjoy a pipe. And that's how you zen out. It's a great way to relax. Uh, when done in moderation, you're going to be okay. The peace and the zen and the chill that you get from puffing on a pipe certainly outweighs any risks, threats, or dangers of pipe smoking. I hope that helps. Thanks.
Enjoy.